Well, folks, we have a little bit of an update on the Nintendo Switch 2 and the chip going inside of it. And this information seems to be coming from a YouTube channel known as Moore's Law is Dead. And it's a little fascinating because it does suggest that NVIDIA might be a smidge frustrated with some decisions Nintendo has made. However, in the end, these decisions might have caused Nintendo to literally have a better system which to me is quite fascinating, especially for something that's looking like it's going to launch in 2025. Uh, before we dive in, though, I just want to remind you guys we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers. Would appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this kind of content. And let's go ahead and dive in. So you see over here this article on WCCF Tech covering uh, a podcast that he did. He had a recent podcast episode. It says Nintendo Switch 2 late launch is leaving people at NVIDIA confused. Node shrink could boost performance to 4.5 teraflops. Now, they do have this listed as a rumor, but of course, when this headline pops up on social media, it doesn't come up as a rumor. The Nintendo Switch 2 late launch may have brought some sort of hardware redesign that may impact the console's performance. In the latest episode of Moore's Law, is dead broken silicon podcast it has been revealed how some people at nvidia are confused that the next nintendo console still isn't out as the system was supposed to apparently be released in 2023 i'm assuming holiday 2023 well it is not known yet why the system still hasn't been released there's the chance that this delay from the projected release window may have led to some changes to the system's design that could impact its performance slightly. The Nintendo Switch 2 was originally planned, again this is all rumor, to use an 8 nanometer node, but this may have been changed due to the console launching in 2025. Nintendo may also have moved to a smaller node, possibly from Samsung, for better power efficiency, more capacity, and reduced cost. As Moore's Law is Dead is rightfully pointing out, releasing a new system using a node from 2020 23 wouldn't be a smart move as things have changed in the past few years tsmc for an example has improved its node since then is charging less for them and they are easier to produce if a node shrink or any sort of hardware redesign was made to the nintendo switch 2 then there's the chance it could hit 4.5 teraflops in docked mode as opposed to the rumored 4 teraflops reported some time back as of now, the Switch 2 specs have yet to be confirmed, but we have a rough idea of what the system will be capable of thanks to leaks. If the console will indeed support 12 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM, it could deliver better texture quality than the weakest current gen console, the Xbox Series S, but its generational performance is unlikely to top it due to a much weaker CPU. NVIDIA DLSS is likely to help the console output resolutions higher than 1080p with ease, although seeing a 4K output may not happen very often. This is all just stuff coming from this podcast right here, which we will link directly to this WCCF article and this podcast. I did go listen to the section uh, in this show to just verify that this is stuff that he actually said, and it is. So, Obviously, when we're looking at all this, what does this really mean? Obviously, the 4.5 teraflops here is the big thing that's getting a lot of focus here, right? You're adding another, you know, 0.5 of a teraflop to your performance. That's nothing but good. Uh, but the biggest thing when we're talking about a die shrink going from 8 nanometers to something like 6 or 4 nanometers is better power efficiency and also more chips created per wafer, which is really, really fascinating. That means there can be more of these made quicker uh, and possibly cheaper overall long haul. Now, there actually is some evidence to support Nintendo doing this because they actually did it during the Nintendo Switch era. It originally launched a 20 nanometer uh, Tegra X1 chip and then in the redesign that ended up going with the Switch Lite and the version 2 they ended up shrinking that down to 16 nanometers so that is what created that extra power efficiency that we have seen moving forward with Switch also technically there's slightly better clocks on things like the switch oled due to better cooling and stuff but they didn't really shrink the note again the biggest thing here though to note in all of this is nintendo is you know the fact that they were willing to just two years in shrink the node of literally the nintendo switch to something smaller and more power efficient 
lets you know that Nintendo, if this originally was supposed to be 8 nanometers, possibly could have decided to switch over to a 4 nanometer node, especially if mass manufacturing hasn't gone in, uh, in yet. It would make sense that, well, maybe... Now that there's better nodes, Nintendo got their hands on those. The big thing about this all, of course, is how shipping works, how uh, manufacturing functions, and that Nintendo would have placed these orders years ago, and we don't know what the letter of the orders were. Were the orders specifically that it had to be at 8 nanometer, or was it one of those fluid things where if 4 nanometer lines opened up and it became cheaper and more efficient, Nintendo would choose that? Or, heck, was 8 nanometer wrong and Nintendo was going 4 nanometer this entire time? This is the sort of stuff we're kind of stuck with speculating on in the world of the Nintendo Switch 2 until Nintendo not just reveals the system, but honestly, when it comes to the size of the chip itself, Nintendo's probably not going to give us those details. We're, we're likely not going to find out until it's in reviewers' hands, until there's tech breakdowns, x-rays, etc., to confirm all the exact details of the hardware. So... The reason this matters, though, is because the smaller the node, the more that you can get out of the chip. You can get more performance with less heat draw, less power, and yes, easier to cool. So it ends up being better for the battery life, better for performance, better for cooling, and better for consumers. But generally, it is a little bit more expensive. And look, 4 nanometer is not the latest tech out there. We've seen 3 nanometer, 2 nanometer being talked about. So it's not even the latest stuff stuff out there so we're not talking about Nintendo going down to the latest it's just going down to something that might make sense now again it very well could still be eight nanometers and it's possible that it's just that is just significantly cheaper than four nanometers despite being able to get more made per wafer which does reduce costs some but maybe still the cost isn't reduced as much as the deal they can get for eight nanometer and they might go with that and then use four nanometer later for switch light switch to light switch to oled etc but we don't really know Right now, this is just no man's land, and all of this stuff is coming from Moore's Law is Dead. Now, I do want to note there is obviously some stuff with Moore's Law is Dead that over time has shown that maybe he's not the original source on some of the stuff he's saying. I don't know where he gets his information from. He claims that he's got contacts at NVIDIA, and that could be where he's getting this stuff from. I, do, I just want to note that a lot of the stuff that he talked about in this particular video has actually been talked about in the future hardware thread over on Fami boards. Uh, and they've been off the eight nanometer train for quite some time. And it's possible that maybe uh, he got some of that information from there or if he didn't and has his own sources, which is what he claims, then he's really just verifying things they have been talking about and speculating over there. Uh, so I find it to be quite fascinating. Obviously, Moore's Law is dead, has a reputation. His reputation is he does sometimes have inside information, and sometimes he's completely wrong. You know, there's... It's kind of a crapshoot, but I guess that's the way it feels when you're talking about rumors and inside information. And you know what? If he is wrong, this was a pretty short play, and we'll know pretty soon, you know, probably within a year. But I don't know, man. I happen to think that uh, Moore's Law is dead means well most of the time. I haven't had a real conversation with him, but maybe we can get him to come on the Nintendo Byte podcast sometime and uh, talk a little bit about his process behind the leaks and the rumors and, and if he's just you know, throwing everything out that he hears without verifying stuff. Does he get multiple sources? All of that kind of thing. Uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Uh, pretty excited for Switch 2. Just am. It is what it is. I'm super excited. Uh, there's a couple other pieces of news I just want to note. Uh, Nintendo is opening a new Nintendo store here in the U.S., so no longer will you have to go to Nintendo New York because there's going to be a Nintendo San Francisco. We'll link to that article down below. That is an official announcement from Nintendo. Not something I felt was worthy of its own video personally, but it is something that I want to make sure you guys are aware of, especially if you live on the West Coast. Um, and yeah, that's, I guess that's, we'll leave it at that. The other news I had just isn't even worth a mention. Thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next video.